All righty. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Wolf SSL Live webinar on post quantum crypto with uh, Wolf SSL engineer Anthony Hu. My name is Kajal Sukoda, and I will be moderating this webinar. As a reminder, all attendees will be in listen only mode. If you have any questions, please feel free to use the Q&A box or raise your hand to be unmuted if you would like to ask the question live as we do host a Q&A session following this presentation. This webinar will also be recorded and made available on our YouTube channel shortly after the presentation. I invite everyone to follow us on Twitter at WolfSSL as well as all of our other socials. And please feel free to email us at facts at wolfssl.com if you have any additional questions. And now I'd like to give a brief company overview before we move to the technical presentation. So Wolf SSL was founded in 2004 by Todd Auska and Larry Stefanik when they realized there wasn't an open source dual licensed embedded SSL library available. OpenSSL existed at the time, but there was a demand for an alternative that was easily portable, smaller, faster, available under a clear commercial license, was equipped with a clean and modern API, and offered commercial style developer support. WolfSSL was born into this market need with an OpenSSL compatibility layer. Today, WolfSSL secures over 2 billion connections. We have more than 1,000 OEM customers and dozens of resellers. WolfSSL is made up of almost 50 dedicated employees in 2021, most of which are engineers. This progress is of course supported by a strong partner network that we're very proud of, which includes DDCI, STMicro, and RTI, for example. Since the beginning, our engineering team has developed several embedded security products, including WolfCrypt with the DO178 support, FIPS certification, and a FIPS ready offering, MQTT up to the version 5 specification, SSH v2, TPM 2.0, a secure bootloader known as WolfBoot, as well as Java wrappers and JSSC support, and commercial support for curl. All of these offerings are accompanied by thorough maintenance and support plans up to the 24-7 level. We also offer full service consulting. And now I'm going to hand it over to Anthony for the technical presentation. Thank you, Kajal. Uh, hi, my name's Anthony. Um, I'll be taking you through this presentation. Um, basically, it's a it's a this presentation is composed of what you see on the screen right now. It's a very quick high-level non-technical introduction to post-quantum cryptography and we'll get into um, explaining the demo um, there'll be there'll be diagrams of the demo architecture as well as preparations for it then there's going to be all the build steps for all the projects that are involved in the demo and then we'll actually go to the demo itself um, just in case something catastrophic happens i have also included the 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 contents of what will be seen during the demo as slides. Um, at the end of the demo, if the demo goes well, we'll skip those slides and we'll go right into an analysis, an analysis of the connections and some size and statistics about post-quantum crypto. And finally, at the very end, we're going to look into the future directions for our post-quantum um, for our post-quantum uh, Actions. Okay, so this is the the thing that a lot of people think about, and they think, well, isn't it too early to worry about post quantum crypto? And the answer is no. Post quantum cryptography algorithms promise to be extremely different from conventional algorithms. So it's going to take some time to kind of get them integrated and properly prepare for them. Um, for example, chems have very different APIs and different very different mechanics from like uh, ECDHE or DHE. Um, for example, uh, in TLS 1.3, the client does key gen, then the server will do encapsulation of a shared secret, and then the, the client does decapsulation of the shared secret. 
This is extremely different from ECDHE, for example, because in ECDHE, both the server and client do exactly the same thing. So now for, for our customers, you're in luck because Wolf SSL abstracts away this, this, this concept of, of differences between server and client. Um, the one thing that, that is kind of something that needs to be paid closer attention to are artifacts and their sizes. The sizes of private keys, public keys, signatures, um, ciphertext are all much larger than what you're used to in terms of ECC or even RSA. So it's, it, it, it's something that you have to kind of think about and, and kind of work into your infrastructure uh, as early as possible so that you have time to prepare. Um, so a minor, a min more minor details that keys can't be used for both authentication and key establishment. They're separate algorithms. So for example, um, you, ECC, an ECC key could be used for both authentication and, and um, key exchange. It's not advisable, but it's possible. Um, now when standardization does happen, there will be new OIDs. Uh, and code points. So, you know, you got to stay agile and make sure that you're ready for those new OIDs and code points. So, you know, will you be ready for these changes? And, and you know, can you start now? Well, for key exchange, the hybrid groups that we're going to be proposing on the next slide, they're safe because they give you at least the same protection as the NIST ECC curves. And that's on top of the protection of the post quantum algorithms. Okay, so these are the algorithms uh, that we have integrated into Wolf SSL. On the signature side, we have Falcon. On the Chem Group side, we have Kyber, Enshru, and Saber. And for all the Chems, we've hybridized them with, excuse me, we've hybridized them with the NIST uh, approved curves. Um, so you might be noticing that there's a lot of, everything has the word level uh, uh, attached to it. Well, as part of the post-quantum cryptography competition, this defines security levels that held equivalences to AES and SHA-3. <clears throat> Each of the submission teams created variants or parameter sets that claimed conformance to one of the levels. However, each of the submission teams came up with their own naming conventions. With all the naming conventions being different, it became hard to remember all the variant names. So here at Wolf SSL, we've decided to unify the variant names and base it on the NIST levels. We didn't implement all the finalists. However, we did implement all the levels of the finalists that we chose. That is, if the paper, uh, if the submission team specified a level, then we, we implemented it. So one thing that's really interesting is that our code points, OIDs, and cryptographic artifacts are all interoperable with the Open Quantum Safe Project's OpenSSL fork. Uh, we'll be talking a little bit more about uh, Open Quantum Safe uh, in the next in the following slides. Um, so here is the the preparations for the uh, for the demo. Um, before you have a TLS connection. The certificate chain must be established. We used Open Quantum Safe's OpenSSL fork to generate two certificate certificate chains, uh, along with the server private key. So the root CA uh, signs the server certificate. So this is a little bit different from most deployments where there might be an intermediate intermediate certificate. <clears throat> So the main demo will be a quantum safe HTTPS connection over TLS 1.3. Um, Apache HTTP will be the server while curl will be the client. Both of them will be calling Wolf SSL, which will in turn be integrated with LibOQS. LibOQS is the open quantum safe projects uh, implementation of all these algorithms. Finally, an instance of Wireshark that has been modified to recognize our code points and OIDs will be monitoring the connection. 
<clears throat> so the next few slides are going to discuss the software and the build process. I'm not going into them with very much detail. These are mostly here for reference in case anyone in the audience wants to reproduce this demo. If you do want to reproduce, please email fax at woltssl.com requesting a copy of these slides. So we're gonna be looking at LibOQS, uh, the OQS project's OpenSSL fork, um, obviously also WolfSSL and some WolfSSL example code, as well as uh, Curl, Apache, and Wireshark. Most notably, WolfSSL will be using the master branch. Uh, and that's because um, in our latest release, uh, 5.0.0, we still hadn't integrated uh, Falcon. So we only had all the chems and the hybrid chems and Falcon wasn't in there yet. Um, so our master branch now does have Falcon integrated. Uh, so here's, here are the links and commands um, for getting all of these releases. And um, most of them are just tarballs. We, I'm assuming you know how to handle a tarball. And uh, I'm assuming you also know how to use git. So there are the git clones, or git clone commands. And so um, these, this, this gets you all the code you need to get, this, that, that, to get us up and running. So the, the first step is to build LibOQS. And these are, you know, it's a CMake project. So these are fairly standard build uh, steps for CMake projects. Um, this is for the OpenSSL fork. Um, and again, we need the fork so that we can generate the Falcon certificates, uh, the, the Falcon certificate chain. Um, again, this is a fairly standard build process for, for uh, OpenSSL. Um, one thing to note is that we have the a Falcon, uh, generate Falcon chain scripts in WolfSSL examples. You copy it over and you can generate it directly in this directory. Um, to build WolfSSL, again, this is pretty normal. Uh, the first four flags on the configure command line ensure that we can build Apache against WolfSSL. And the fifth flag enables the integration with LibOQS. The simplest one, of course, is curl, which is just configure with WolfSSL and then make all and make install. Um, so Apache is a little bit more complicated. Note that we have two patches that need to apply, need to be, need to be applied to Apache. And then we do uh, configure. Now the configure command line, the first four flags ensure we can use WolfSSL with Apache, while well, the last one enables our LibOQS integration. <clears throat> um, yep, and to build Wireshark, there are a lot of dependencies. So Wireshark is of course, has a graphical user interface. So that means there are a lot of dependency on libraries and other open source projects. If you really want to get into it, there are different ways to build. There are there there's um, an OQS joint integration with us where uh, you can build it on a Docker image. Uh, we also have a patch. Um, if you're interested, please please get in contact with me. I'm at Anthony at WolfSSL.com. Now for the Apache configuration, we have. Uh, this is pretty much generic. Um, the only thing that's special here is that we're pointing to quantum safe Falcon server certificate and server private key files. Okay, so on to the demo. Uh, let's see, hold on for a second. I'm going to be leaving this presentation for the moment. And as you can see up here, we are looking, we've already <clears throat> executed, I've taken the liberty of executing the uh, Apache um, web server. And it's already running, waiting for connections. Um, here's the command for curl. Uh, 
something of note to see here is that we're specifying a hybrid cipher, uh, sorry, a hybrid group uh, P521 with Kyber level five. Um, our certificate is a Falcon level five root cert. And our cipher suite is a standard TLS 1.3 AES 256 GCM SHA-384. Uh, before I do this connection, I'm going to start Wireshark. There you go, Wireshark's listening. And there we go. Let's stop that so we don't get any other weird stuff. Uh, notice, we were successful. We got the classical Apache It Works web page. So um, that would be boring. That would be quite the boring demo, except we can we can use Wireshark and look into some of the content of the actual um, conversation. Oops, excuse me. <clears throat> Let's see now. What can we see here? We see we have a TLS 1.3 connection. Um, where is it? We have a cipher suite that we specify on the command line, which is AES 256 GCM SHA-384. Um, let's see now, we have, what else are we interested in here? We're interested in the signature algorithms. Uh, we have the standard signature algorithms up top, as well as Falcon level one and Falcon level five. Um, so we're good there. That's what we're uh, accepting. Um, now let's look at the supported groups. So again, we have the NIST supported uh, the NIST curves, as well as here comes the interesting part: all the uh, post quantum chems that we that I specified on an earlier slide. And as well, underneath those, we have the excuse me, we have the hybridized um, groups. Um, one other interesting thing in the client hello is the key share extension here. So we've gone ahead and sent a um, P521 Kyber level five, um, a public key over. So this is actually a hybrid pu public key. It's concatenated. It's two, two public keys concatenated, the P521 public key, as well as the Kyber level five public key. And as you can see, it's a pretty large uh, public key. It's, uh, it ends up being 17, a uh, length of 1700 bytes. So let's move on to the server hello. Uh, server hello indicates Again, TLS 1.3 was negotiated. Uh, AES 256 GCM SHA-384 was negotiated. And P521 Kyber level five was negotiated. Again, a length of 17, uh, about 1700 bytes. Except this time, instead of the public key, the server sent over the encapsulated um, shared secret, uh, which we, we call ciphertext. Um, and the rest is encrypted. So um, because we're in TLS 1.3, obviously the rest of the, after, after the, um, the key share message, all content is encrypted. <coughs> Um, I do have a recorded PCAP where we have the uh, encrypted extensions decrypted. So uh, if there's any interest or and, and any extra time at the end, uh, let me know if you're interested in seeing that. <clears throat> so let's talk about the exp uh, let's let's talk about this connection um, <clears throat> and why it was quantum safe. So <clears throat> the authentication was done using Falcon Level Five. Key establishment was done via quantum safe. Kyber level five chem. So those two averted Shor's algorithm. But you might be wondering, wait a second, AES-256, is that quantum safe? Well, <clears throat> currently we think of AES-128 as being satisfactory level of security. Since Grover algorithm cuts the security of symmetric algorithms by half, we can simply double the 
AES strength to get a satisfactory level of strength in the presence of quantum computers. So if 128 is satisfactory, then we double to 256. And Grover's algorithm says we have to half it back to 128, which is still satisfactory. Um, and a nice little bonus notice here is that ECC P521 is, and uh, AES256 are FIPS, FIPS algorithms. Um, okay, so let's start talking about numbers um, and artifacts and how big and small they are. So of all the private keys, and true level one is the smallest of all the public keys. Saber level one is the smallest. Um, Ciphertext wise, and true level one is again smallest. Um, the shared secret, they're all 32 bytes. So, I mean, that's just a sort of normal thing that was um, required by NIST. And in TLS handshake, an overall TLS handshake, and true level one was, was the smallest, excuse me. <clears throat> Um, just, I just like to highlight, if you look at these numbers on the side, like, you know, these are the smallest ones and some of, and you know, they're well above, like they're well above half a, half a kilobyte. So these are, th these sizes are something that, uh, you're, that, that everybody's going to have to start kind of thinking about how they're going to integrate into their systems. <clears throat> so in terms of resource usage. These these algorithms use up quite a bit of a uh, quite a bit of memory, <clears throat> um, you know, like 50, 60 k. We're talking on the client side. We're talking 146 k. So <clears throat> that's a it's a lot of memory. Um, but it is worth noting that none of these are are uh, resource kind of optimized. Um, <clears throat> once once an algorithm once the algorithm, sorry once the winning algorithm has been announced. I think there'll be a lot more focus on, on kind of optimizations and, and resource management in terms of the implementations of these, uh, of these algorithms. So keep an eye on this. this, this these numbers are likely to go uh, down drastically. <clears throat> okay. So these numbers are extremely interesting because while we, while, while I th in the beginning we thought post-quantum Cryptography was going to be slow, and you know, for Falcon's signature uh, signing operation, it is quite slow compared to ECDSA over SecP two fifty six R one. But for everything else, um, the post quantum algorithms are doing really well. Uh, the signature verification for Falcon level one uh, handily beats. Set P two fifty six R one, and for Chem, all the operations are much much faster than uh, than ECDHE over Set P two fifty six R one. So we're looking pretty good in terms of that. <clears throat> so I'd like to talk about Wolf SSL and future directions for our post quantum uh, algorithms. <clears throat> so in January of twenty twenty two. Uh, NIST is supposed to be announcing the results of the PQC competition. So yeah, winners will be announced. Um, <clears throat> we'll likely be dropping the ones that don't move forward. So I believe they're announcing one or two chems, and, uh, and I think they're only announcing one signature scheme. Um, but that could change, I'm not, and I'm not really sure. Um, they'll also be announcing a new competition to find more signature schemes. So we're definitely going to be following progress of that, probably along with uh, the, the open quantum safe team. Um, so other things that we can look into are like uh, chem TLS, which is it's picking up support within the uh, academic community. And <clears throat> um, post quantum cryptography on ARM Cortex M family of processors. Uh, is looking like an interesting area. We're not really sure about it, but uh, we, we, we have seen some academic papers talking about Cortex-M families of processors. Um, we're, we want to do PQ um, algorithm support in Wolf SSH, Wolf SSH, but again, it's a matter of priorities. <clears throat> but you know, of this list, 
What's more, most important is what you would like to see. Uh, Wolf SSL is a, an open source project, but it is supported by customers. So please make your voice heard and let us know what you would like to see in terms of post-quantum uh, post -quantum algorithms and, and what kind of development you would like to see. You can, you can let us know by emailing us at fax at wolfssl.com or even just emailing me or your sales representatives or anybody. Be heard. And that's it. I'll take it back to uh, Kajal and uh, see if there's anything in the Q&A. All righty, thank you so much, Anthony. We have a couple of questions here. Um, one is, what is a KEM? Oh, a KEM? Mm -hmm. Right, so uh, a KEM, well, I keep on saying KEM, but a KEM is a cryptographic kind of, well, it stands for, um, key encapsulation mechanism. And what it does is you generate two, sorry, you generate a public and a private key using your algorithm. And then one side sends the public key to the other side and the other side does an encapsulation operation. The output of the encapsulation algorithm, uh, of the encapsulation operation is a shared secret and ciphertext. The ciphertext is then sent back to the person to the uh, to the person who did the key gen, and they have the private key. The private key, along with the ciphertext, uh, is used in a decapsulation operation. That decapsul the output of that decapsulation operation is the shared secret. So now both sides have a shared secret that was shared over an open, that was securely shared over an open channel. I hope that answers your question. Awesome, yeah. Uh, another question we have is, uh, what is an OID? An OID, ah, this is a very interesting question. Um, an OID is a standardized set of constants. It's like a string of numbers. And they're standardized. For example, uh, I can't remember the off the top of my head what uh, ECDSA's OID is, but in every in every ECDSA public key, it's a company with its OID to identify it. It also has an OID to identify which curve that public key is associated with. So these post-quantum algorithms are not standardized. They're going through a competition. As such, no OIDs and no code points are defined for them. As such, <clears throat> we had to make them up and we're using non-standard uh, OIDs to identify them. Once the standardization process begins and is finished, there will be standardized OIDs to identify these algorithms. Awesome. Um, and we've received some questions about the slides. If you'd send an email to us at fax at wolfssl.com requesting the slides, we'll be happy to send that over to you. Uh, oh, Kajal, I'd like to add that the instructions on the slides are, are there, are obviously on the slides, but we also have um, really detailed instructions in the in our OSP repository, uh, GitHub repository, which tells you how to get the um, get the demos up and running. Awesome. All righty, we have a few more questions here. Um, your presentation uses other projects. What purely Wolf examples do you have? Um, I guess this person is specifically interested in Wolf SSH. Uh, Wolf SSH currently does not have any of the post quantum algorithms uh, integrated yet. Um, please do let us know your interest. Please email fax at wolfssl.com to, to kind of get the ball rolling and the conversation rolling. Um, in terms of Wolf SSL itself, uh, ex the example server and example client both support this. Um, let's see. 
we have we uh, uh, so HTTP supports this, curl supports this. Um, we haven't tried very many other integrations, but the the thing is though that that the, when we did this integration with LibOQS, it required no API changes. So the way to specify that you want to use an open um, that you want to use a post quantum algorithm is to specify it via use uh, use key share. So there's like a, an API called Wolf SSL underscore use key share. And if you use the, if you specify the code point for, a, uh, what is it called? For a, for a post quantum group, uh, it'll be used. That's basically all you need to do from an application perspective. Um, to use Falcon, no changes to your code are required. You just use the Falcon certificates and private keys and you're, you're, you're good to go. So these, this is a really, really, really nice kind of agile way to do development. I hope that answers your question. Awesome. Uh, we have another question here that's asking if you essentially just increase the number of key bits um, and then the perf issue aside, what is gained from doing that? Uh, could you could you repeat the second part? Perf issue aside, what is gained? Oh, I am assuming that means performance issue. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you remember in the beginning, um, I was talking about how NIST defined three levels of security, or sorry, five levels of security, they defined five levels of security. And most of the teams um, that made submissions to NIST, NIST PQC competition um, implemented levels one, three, and five. Uh, so those, those are the security levels. And uh, those are defined by NIST um, and have equivalent, and one, three, and five in particular have equivalences to AES, uh, to the various security levels of AES. Now, um, the key sizes do increase, but the details of what, of, of what like internal to the keys uh, change. That's a little bit outside of the scope of this conversation, but you can get more details by going to the NIST round three competition webpage where they have all the submission of papers uh, there for you to see. Fantastic. Um, and then we have another question here asking why not key agreement? Are only public keys exchanged and symmetric key crypto tax never send? So the chem, the chem algorithm will generate your shared secret for you. So that that shared secret is never sent over the wire. That shared secret is kept private, and the chem generates your ciphertext, and that ciphertext gets sent over. Um, that ciphertext gets sent over the wire in, in, in the open, uh, but because it's ciphertext and, and because you know this is cryptography, uh, that will give nobody access to the uh, to the actual shared secret. Um, the the key the person who did the key gen they have the private key. That private key can be used to decrypt the ciphertext. This is much like um, uh, this is much like an RSA cam. RSMK, RSA cam uh, is, my, is, is, is just does the exact same thing. Um, now you're asking why cams, why not DH-like algorithms? Uh, there are DH-like DH algorithms. However, uh, the format that NIST specifically asked for was for cams. And cams just have kind of an easier security analysis from what I understand, uh, but that's, that's a little bit too deep for me. <laughs> I don't really, I, I haven't really gone that deep into um, the security uh, analysis, analysis methods that are used by NIST. 
Um, I hope that answers your question. Awesome. Oh, uh, we have a question right here. Is uh, Diffie Hellman being abandoned post quantum? Um, ooh, that's a good question. So I would say no. I mean, how do I say this? It, it Diffie Hellman is not quantum secure. Um, so yeah, once we get to a point where we know that there are, um, we know that there are quantum computers out there and that they are cryptographically relevant, uh, Diffie Hellman would at least need to be hybridized with a quantum safe algorithm, um, if not abandoned. But I mean, Right now, we can't really abandon it at this particular moment because obviously it's it's part of TLS 1.3 and has been standardized as part of TLS 1.3. Kajal, uh, are there any more questions? Uh, fantastic. Those seem to be the last of our questions. Thank you, Anthony, so much for a fantastic presentation. As a reminder to everyone, if you have any additional questions, please don't hesitate uh, to contact us at fax at wolfssl.com and we'd be happy to help you with any of your questions or comments. And if you'd also like to receive a copy of the slide deck, please contact us at fax at wolfssl.com and we'll be happy to send that over. Otherwise, thank you, Anthony, so much for a wonderful presentation, and I hope everyone has a fantastic rest of their day. Thank you, Kajal. I had a wonderful experience here. <laughs>